Hit the subscribe button if you don't want me to come at night. Ever had that feeling of being watched? Even when you're supposedly alone? Howdy folks, the name's Jack, just your average Joe working a 9 to 5 in a small town living a quiet life. My day typically starts with a hearty breakfast, then off to work I go. When the workday ends I return to my quaint little house nestled between towering oaks and whispering willows. One dusky evening after a long day at work, I sauntered into my humble abode. No sooner did I cross the threshold than an icy chill ran down my spine, as if the very air in the room had turned against me. It was an eerie feeling, like the calm before a storm. As I meandered through the house I began to notice things out of place. The armchair in the living room, usually facing the fireplace, was now slightly skewed, as if someone had been sitting there, watching the flames dance. My favorite picture frame, the one with the black and white photograph of my grandparents, was tilted just a smidge to the right. The window in the kitchen, which I always keep shut because of the draft, was ajar, letting in the cool evening breeze. Now, I'm not one to spook easily. I've lived alone for quite some time, and I've grown accustomed to the creaks and groans of an old house. But this, this was different. It was as if my sanctuary, my place of refuge, had been invaded by an unseen entity. The rational part of me wanted to dismiss these occurrences as figments of an overworked mind. Maybe I'd moved the chair and forgotten about it. Or perhaps the wind had pushed open the window. But deep down, a seed of dread had been planted, its roots reaching into the recesses of my fears. I shrugged it off, thinking it was just my mind playing tricks on me. Little did I know I wasn't alone. That night, the silence was deafening. The tranquility of the moonlit house was shattered by the faintest sounds, sounds that shouldn't have been there. The stillness of the air was punctuated by soft, unexplained footsteps, echoing through the hush like the ghostly heartbeat of the house. The rhythmic patter seemed to dance around the corners, eluding my desperate attempts to pinpoint its origin. The whispers were next, hushed and indistinct, they were a low murmur at the edge of my hearing like a secret conversation carried on the barest breath of wind. Was it the wind? Or was it something else? A chill ran down my spine as I strained to decipher the cryptic whispers, my heart pounding in rhythm with the ticking of the ancient grandfather clock. And then, there were the doors. Doors that I knew, I was certain. I had left securely shut creaked open with an eerie, agonizing slowness. I could hear the groaning of the hinges, like a lament in the silence, as if the house itself was crying out in fear. I searched, my footsteps a quiet echo of the unknown intruders. My heart pounded in my chest, each thump a drumbeat of terror. My flashlight's beam cut through the darkness, casting long, monstrous shadows that seemed to dance and flicker with a life of their own. But my search yielded nothing. No sign of a break-in, no evidence of an intruder, nothing out of place. The tension was unbearable. A palpable entity that seemed to pulsate with every beat of my heart. It was as though the house itself was holding its breath, waiting for... something. I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched, of unseen eyes following my every move. As I settled back into bed the covers pulled tightly around me like a protective cocoon. The house fell silent once again. The whispers, the footsteps, the creaking doors, all had ceased. But just as I was beginning to convince myself that it was all a product of my overactive imagination, I heard it. A low chuckle, barely audible, but unmistakably human. It echoed from the shadows, a sinister promise of the terror that was yet to come. Morning came, and with it, more signs of the unseen. The sun's first rays greeted me as I rubbed my tired eyes my heart pounding in my chest like a trapped bird. My home, once my sanctuary, now felt like a cage. The kitchen was a stage set for a breakfast I never planned. Bacon, eggs and bread were neatly laid out on the counter, the butter knife's edge glinting ominously in the morning light. Now, I'm a creature of habit, but this, this was beyond me. I didn't recall setting this up. The confusion was a thick fog in my mind, swirling and obscuring any semblance of reason. But the breakfast tableau was just the appetizer to the main course of dread. My daily newspaper, always delivered to my doorstep, was already inside. Its pages were spread out on the coffee table, not on the sports section that I usually read with my morning brew, but on the obituaries page. The black and white faces of the departed stared up at me as if accusingly. 
their life stories reduced to mere paragraphs. The sight chilled me more than the coldest winter's night. My thoughts raced, desperately seeking a logical explanation. Had I done all this in some sleepwalking stupor? Or was there a more sinister explanation? Each creak of the old house, each whisper of the wind, amplified my growing fear. The walls of my home seemed to press in on me, a silent, oppressive force that threatened to consume me. I prowled the rooms of my home, a prisoner in my own castle. The mounting fear was a bitter taste in my mouth, each swallow harder than the last. The once familiar corners of my home now held an unspeakable dread, shadows lurking with unseen dangers. The fear, the confusion, the growing panic, it was a toxic cocktail that made my head spin. I was caught in a nightmare that refused to end, a chilling tale that was becoming my reality. Was I losing my mind, or was there really someone or something in my house? Uh, by the third day I was convinced I was sharing my house with an uninvited guest. The reality of the situation was chilling, yet I knew I had to catch this intruder, so I decided to set up cameras around the house. The thought of having an unknown entity within my walls was unsettling, but I was determined to uncover the truth. As I watched the footage, my heart pounded in my chest. Each second clicked by like an ominous drumbeat, the suspense growing unbearable. Then I saw it. A figure shrouded in darkness moving around my house. It was like a wisp of smoke barely noticeable, but it was there, it was real. Its movements were oddly human, yet eerily distorted. A chill ran down my spine as I watched it linger around my personal belongings, disturbing their usual order. The figure moved with a strange familiarity, as if it had been there for a long time. It seemed to know the layout of my home, each nook and cranny, each hidden corner. It was as if it was not just a guest, but a resident of the house. The fear was not just about the intrusion, but the realization that it had been watching me, observing me. One particular footage still haunts me. The figure stood at the foot of my bed as I slept, watching me with an unseen gaze. It felt as if it was studying me, or perhaps just enjoying the sight of me in my most vulnerable state. The thought of it watching me in my sleep was enough to send shivers down my spine. Every creak in the house, every gust of wind, every shadow now held a new meaning. The signs were clear. This was not a mere intruder. This was something more, something far more sinister. I was living with a ghost, a phantom who was making itself at home. The thought was terrifying, but it was the reality. The uninvited guest was not just an intruder, it was a part of my life, a part of my home, and it was here to stay. That night, I decided it was time to confront my house guest. The words hung in the air, a promise and a threat as I steeled myself for the encounter. I was no longer the timid soul who recoiled at the slightest noise. The fear had transformed me, hardened me. It was time to reclaim my home, my sanctuary. In the stillness of the night, I sat in the dark. The only light, a sliver of moonlight slicing through the drawn curtains. I had devised a plan, simple yet daring. I would wait, wait for the entity that had turned my life into a living nightmare. I would meet it head on, confront it, demand answers. The house was silent, a disturbing quiet that sank into your bones and made your heart thump louder in your chest. And then, as if on cue, the familiar sounds began. The soft, deliberate footsteps echoed through the house, a chilling symphony of the uncanny. The hair on my nape stood on end, a primal reaction to the unseen predator. The atmosphere changed, the air grew denser, as if the house itself was holding its breath in anticipation. Then came the chill, a bone-deep cold that seeped into my skin, turning my breath into a frosty mist. It was a cold that went beyond the physical, a cold that gnawed at your soul, made you question your sanity. It was the herald of its arrival, the phantom houseguest. And finally there it was, the shadow. It was taller than I had imagined, a dark figure that towered over me, exuding an aura of malevolence. It was a specter, an apparition, a wraith. It was my tormentor, my unwelcome guest. Slowly I turned to face it, my heart pounding in my chest. The room felt colder, the air heavier, the silence deeper. And then, just as I was about to speak, just as I was about to confront it, everything went black. As I turned to face it, the room went cold, and then, everything went black. Hit the subscribe button if you don't want me to come at night.